hold something. Ooh. Ooh. Got a cramp in an ab. Hello everyone, welcome back to Below Par, myself, Joe Avery. So in today's video then, I'm gonna help you gain some more power in your golf swing, allowing you to hit the ball just that little bit further, and hopefully then you can outdrive your friends, because that, in the fairness, is the main reason why we all wanna hit it just that little bit further. So stay tuned to the video, let's get started. So before we get going in today's video, if I could ask each one of you to subscribe that watches this, that'd be really helpful. We're still trying to get to our thousand subscribers, Okay, so like everyone then that plays golf, we want to hit the ball a little bit further. Now it's really interesting that power in the golf swing actually is a really natural movement. It's a real cross-sport blend that allows us to get this power. And from day to day, you will do something that you should be doing in your golf swing that let's say you don't do, that then is causing you to have a lack of power. Now the key thing I see first off is a load of people trying to hit the ball with their arms. So they think I'm gonna get a load of speed, but when we get to the top of the backswing, the first thing that happens is they pull their arms down and actually this gives them a massive slice. So if your friend's got a slice, make sure they, make sure they tune in and watch this video as well. They're going to find this is going to help cure that most likely as well. But what we get a lot of the time is people try and get loads of speed and they just throw their arms at it. Now, realistically, I'm not going to build a lot of speed with just my arms alone. Picture guys that play baseball. Do they just move the bat with just their arms alone? No, they use their body picture rugby players when they're trying to throw a rugby ball when they're moving out the scrum they will move their hips first open up and this then allows the room for the hands and arms to throw it nicely towards their target we're looking for exactly the same thing in the golf swing we're looking to start activating the lower body and start working it from the ground up so we're going to start trying to build the power then from the ground up so you see these long drive guys and they have a huge amount of power now this happens and we've all heard these phrases X Factor and X Factor Stretch. And no, I don't mean the TV show. But when we start thinking about X Factor, that is the separation or the angle between hips and shoulders at the top of the backswing. What we have then is the X Factor Stretch. This is the ability to create more stretch between hips and shoulders on the downswing. And that's what generates our power, not just our arms. We don't have enough power in just our arms to generate those huge speeds. So what we want to do then is we want to think about that cross sport idea. So the first thing I'm going to, need to imagine you're doing is throwing a ball a long way. So you're going to have a ball in your arm here and you're going to stand side onto your target and I want you to feel like you're going to turn open. This thing causes that separation between hips and shoulders, allows me to throw that ball a long way. Next from there, or side on, however you want to throw a ball. Next on from there, we think about baseball. We can do this with a golf club. This is a really nice drill. We're going to stand, we're going to turn, so from here, we're side on, we're gonna turn and open. And from there, I'm gonna need you to turn and swing through. And this then, is gonna start allowing me to feel as if I'm turning towards the target. So what I wanna feel is that idea that our hips are gonna turn first, shoulders remain square, and the arm then stays nice and high if you were throwing a ball, but trying to create the same sort of thing then with our golf club. So what we see too often, as I say, is we get up to the top, first thing that moves then is the arms notice our x-factor stretch now is non-existent there's no coil in my back there's no power hips and shoulders in the same spot means i'm not going to hit the ball very hard or generate a lot of club head speed what we're after then we're going to turn to the top of the backswing from here now we're going to feel like we're moving the left leg first and left hip out the way this now you can already hear in my voice it's caused some tension which means now i'm keeping that club as high as i can and i'm letting it then turn down from there and you can hear the difference in that speed so what we're going to do to begin with, we're going to try a couple of practice swings without a ball, trying to generate as much swoosh as we can. So, in set up, up the top, and move. Trying to keep that club as high as possible at this point for as long as possible. There. And that feels really powerful. So, what we're going to do now, we're going to grab a ball, and we're going to hit a couple of balls as hard as we can. Now nobody practices this and it's really interesting. This is a good thing to practice and get used to doing, hitting the ball a little bit harder. So let's try it. So in a setup, we're gonna think about getting to the top. Hands can stay really high. We're gonna allow the kinetic sequence through our left side to start unloading, keeping that club really high. Then that club is gonna follow on the way down. It's 
really explode with that, with that left hip, keep the hands nice and high. And that felt to me like I generated quite a lot of speed. We'll do one more. And what will be amazing is for a lot of you, if you get this in the right groove, you will most likely hit the ball straighter, which is really surprising. But it's because you have to be very instinctive. There's not much time for things to stop or slow down. You'll probably naturally get yourself into a really good position. So and again, let's hit one more. So I'm thinking about getting that club nice and high. From here now, I'm gonna start unloading the left hip. I'm gonna start turning, keep the hands high. It's gonna bring the club down into that position. Allows them to get on top of the golf ball. Let's give it a go. Up to top, hands high, left hip. There we go. And that's gone just a little bit further than the first one. So that realistically is probably 10 or 15 yards past where I normally hit my seven iron. So I probably should have filmed this video and then the driver video. Oh well, we'll get onto that another time. However, if you are struggling with distance, that is the area you're gonna get the correct power from. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm highly gonna recommend that you do go and see a pro when doing this. However, you can practice this. You will do it in everyday other sports. If you're a rugby player, you'll find you're gonna open up with the hips, you're gonna throw the rugby ball. If you play baseball, you're gonna find you open the hips first and then you hit it. Or if you're pitching, you're gonna open the hips and then throw. There's numerous places there where this movement naturally happens, but we see everybody in the golf swing go up to the top, throw their arms at it, and now I'm completely stuck and I end up hitting this big slice. So guys, I hope you've really enjoyed this video. It's a fun one for me to make. It's gonna help you hit the ball just a little bit further. I will do this another day with a driver, but it's nice to also see it with an iron that it is possible and that you can get those going a little bit further as well. So thank you much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you all very soon.